Hello there guys and welcome to another one of my reviews. Today we are driving the BMW iX3. This is a very important car, not just for the BMW brand, but for the industry as well. Because the ongoing discussion in the business right now is whether as a manufacturer you should go for brand new platforms for electric cars built from scratch that are very modular and allow you to amplify the advantages offered by electric cars as a whole or if you should just convert your cars to an electric model so this is the first car bmw put out part of their power of choice strategy basically bmw is going down the line with the approach that you should be able to buy your favorite car let's say it's an x3 with any kind of powertrain you desire you should buy it you should be able to buy it with a petrol powertrain with a diesel powertrain you should be able to buy it as a plug-in hybrid we have the x drive 30e available or you should be able to buy it as a fully electric car like the ix3 all of these cars are built on the same platform on the same assembly line um, in various parts of the world in the case of the ix3 this is built in china exclusively and then shipped all, all around the world except in the US so <clears throat> what should you know about this car well since it, it adheres to that philosophy the power of choice the changes done to it are very small in terms of design we have a new front bumper with new air intakes on the sides that's very much streamlined in order to be as aerodynamic as possible and we have a new set of grills. These grills are blocked out to make the car more aerodynamic as you would expect it. You also notice these, these blue accents around the grills that tell you this is a BMW i car because the electric version was developed with the help of the BMW i sub-brand. So you also get BMW i blue accents around all the BMW badges around the car from the sides the changes are even smaller you will notice you get aerodynamically optimized wheels we have the 19 inch set here but you can also get a 20 inch set if you want to you have this bmw i badge this is just a decorative element it's not meant to improve the aerodynamics in any way and blue accents on the door seals but that's about it also Around the back, you have the BMW iX3 badge and a new bumper with a new diffuser that has blue accents as well and no tailpipes. Inside the cabin, it's the same story. BMW wanted to keep everything familiar so that customers aren't confused about how they should use their BMW iX3. So we have the same layout as in a regular X3 with a couple of interesting accents on the gear shift knob on the start button they're both they both have blue accents we have a plaque plaque here saying this is a bmw ix3 and the instrument cluster now shows your battery percentage not your fuel uh, state so all of this tells you that this is a electric car but there aren't a lot of changes done to it so we have a brilliant interior over here that's you know been refined by BMW uh, on X3 generations for um, quite some time now. Everything's beautifully laid out. You have plenty of room up front and in the back. It also looks good, feels good to the touch, premium fit and finish and everything you could wish for. You have plenty of room. We also have this panoramic roof to help us out and that gives you the impression of more room than you actually have inside. But it's pretty obvious BMW wanted to keep things very familiar and just as you would find them in a regular X3. The same goes for the seats in the back. You have plenty of room. I'm a six feet tall, six foot tall guy. I have plenty of room up, um, uh, plenty of headroom, pl plenty of elbow room, pl plenty of knee room. Everything's fine. The only difference you will find inside the cabin of the BMW iX3 is in the back. Uh, I mean the boot where you lose some storage space whereas the um, regular x3 has 550 liters of space 
you only get 510 liters on the iX3. But I think losing 40 liters of space is a very good trade-off. Um, shouldn't really put you off. On the technical side of things, um, the BMW X3 iX3, excuse me, um, delivers on its promise. So B when BMW created this car, they just wanted to offer the power of choice to its customers. Basically, they want to create every single kind of propulsion system available on every single one of their cars. So with the launch of the iX3, the X3 range now can be had with a petrol engine, a diesel engine, a plug-in hybrid choice, and a fully electric uh, model. There, therefore, this car, the iX3, is nothing more than a purely electric X3. It uses the same platform, it uses the same body panels. The only differences you would notice are the ones I explained on the exterior of the car. And inside, the same applies. I, I told you already, a couple of different uh, blue accents here and there. But other than that, the cars feel exactly the same. So, what's, on the, what's to be known on the technical side of things? Well, under the floor, we have a compact package of batteries that also includes the transmission sort of speak and the electric motor. And that's one sole unit. BMW worked on developing this kind of a solution to make things a lot easier to build, cheaper to build, and more streamlined. So everything is one global unit, one piece unit that includes the batteries, as I said. So the electric motor is mounted at the back and the car is rear wheel drive only. And it's quite obvious why BMW will, would make this car an electric um, rear-wheel drive SUV because having only one axle propelled makes it a lot more efficient. Having to create this car as an all-wheel drive model would have made it a lot more complex. Um, so this way the car sips less energy. Uh, now um, I'm guessing in the future on other models we will also get all-wheel drive systems but they will be made up of two electric motors, one in the back, one in the front. So, let's get down to the numbers. What kind of power is that electric motor at the back delivering? Well, 286 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. Those are the maximum power output figures. The battery has a total capacity of 80 kilowatt hours, but uh, you can only use 74 kilowatts of all that power. Um, and that, of course, is normal because every battery pack on every electric car has a buffer that is meant to protect the cells inside during charging, usage, and so on. Um, with these figures, the car is slated to do 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 6.8 uh, seconds, which isn't a neck breaking, but it's fast enough. You, of course, have a instant throttle response the moment you press on it and that throttle response changes depending on the driving mode you're in so right now we're in eco pro mode because this is the default setting the car will start in uh, but if you go in comfort mode the throttle response improves slightly and you also get a sound inside a sound that basically tells you you're going faster it's a feedback sort of speak for you to know what's happening uh, with the car's velocity. So that sound and every single sound you hear in this car because when you get in and you start it, you get a, a sound, you get a um, sound when you turn it off. And also when you go in sport mode, the sound changes as well. Don't know if you heard it. And all these sounds have been created um, by Hans Zimmer. If you're not aware, of who Hans, Hans Zimmer is. He is an award-winning Hollywood sound writer. He created a lot of famous soundtracks for very big Hollywood movies like The Gladiator, Interstellar, um, Inception, Batman, and so on. So he is brilliant. I am actually listening to his songs every once in a while, even though they are not mainstream or anything, but the orchestra work and everything is absolutely brilliant. 
and the sound sound um, he created for the iX3, uh, and not only the iX3, he created these sounds for the entire electric range of uh, BMW. They are actually pretty good. They are meant to offer you some kind of acoustic feedback related to what you are doing with the car, what the car is doing on the road, and they work to that end. They're not meant to create a V8 feeling or a straight six feeling or anything like that. Um, yeah, so in sport mode, the car, the car throttle is even sharper, the instrument cluster changes, and the suspension stiffens up. Now, I want to mention the suspension because it's a very important part of this car. Uh, the reason I'm saying that is the iX3 has a 80 kilowatt hour battery on board. And that means it's considerably heavier than a equivalent petrol or diesel powered model. So let's compare this to the uh, xDrive 30i version. That's a 252 uh, horsepower car, which is pretty close to the 286 horsepower this car has. Uh, and that tips the scale at uh, 1.8 tons. This car tips the scale at 2.2 tons. So it has some extra 400 kilos on board. In order to cope with that weight, the suspension had to be reinforced. And this car feels stiffer on the road, a lot stiffer than a normal X3. And when you go into sport mode, it gets even stiffer. So I know why BMW had to do this, but the ride isn't as supple as it is in a regular uh, X3. Is that really troublesome? Well, not so much. I mean, it's comfortable enough. The suspension is muted. It's quite silent. Uh, you don't really hear any noise coming in through the cabin, and that's very good. The car is very well sound insulated as well. I'm on the highway right now. I'm doing about 62 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour. Uh, I'm slowing down because I have to record this. Um, so, and I don't really hear a lot of noise coming into the cabin, and most of it comes from the wheels and the side mirrors, which are pretty big because this is a pretty big car. Um, it's not a terrible nuisance, and I'm sure if I had an internal combustion engine under the hood, I would barely notice it. When you get up to 130 kilometers an hour, which is the speed limit on most highways here in Europe, it does send a bit more sound, um, a bit more noise inside the cabin, but it's not really that bad. Around town, the car is very easy to drive. It's a BMW X3 after all. You have visibility all around. It's really not a problem. You have great visibility all around, including in the back where you have a rather tall tailgate not a problem in any way. So let's talk about energy consumption. I was just about to say fuel consumption, but this is an electric car, let's call it energy consumption. How far can you go on a full charge? Well, BMW claims that the WLTP testing system uh, showed this car can do 460 kilometers on a full charge. I never got that far. The most I could get was 410 kilometers out of a full battery, and that was with an average speed of around 75 kilometers an hour. At that average speed, the fuel, the energy consumption shown by the car was about 18.4 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers covered. Doing the math, split by 74, you would get about 400 and something, you know, 410 kilometers, something like that. So let's round it off to 400, which is not bad. The exterior temperature was rather cold, about five to six degrees Celsius. We are running on winter tires, which are not the most efficient, and I didn't spare any convenience inside the car. I was driving in comfort mode with the AC on, um, and I didn't um, go gently on the car. I just drove it like I would drive any petrol-powered or diesel-powered X3. That's a decent number. Around town, I saw an average energy consumption of uh, 22, 23 kilowatt hour um, per 100 kilometers covered. That would give you like a 330 uh, kilometers of range, which is fine. It's not great, but it's fine. You would probably be good with a single battery charge for like two weeks at least. And then on the highway at 130 kilometers an hour, the average uh, energy consumption was around 24, 25 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers covered, which is basically a range of 300 kilometers on a single charge. 
quite good if you ask me. As I said, I didn't pull any punches. Uh, the car was in comfort mode all the time. Everything was turned on. So just like you would use a conventional car. Charging is also important for an electric car. So on the iX3, you can charge it at home. If you have a charging point, it would take about 10 hours. If you don't have a wall box, it will take uh, about 24 hours using a regular socket. Uh, that's in Europe at uh, 240 volts. If you um, use a AC charger, it can take up uh, to 11 kilowatts. Uh, so it will take about seven hours to recharge it. If you use a 50 kilowatt fast charger, which are the most common fast chargers around here in Europe, it would take about two hours to recharge it. And you can charge this car at 150 kilowatt chargers and that would take about half an hour. Um, you would, it would take about half an hour to get up to 80% uh, charge and then it slows down up to 100%. But you don't have to go up to 100%, just charge it up to 80% and be on your way. That's decent. It's not the best, it's not the worst in the segment. It's very okay. I only charge this car at a fast charger, a 50 kilowatt fast charger. Usually in about an hour, I would get a full charge because I, I would charge it from about 40% every time. So when the battery dropped to 40%, I would plug it in and charge it. I think those are decent numbers. And considering this car is about 65,000 euros in Europe, it's a pretty good deal. I mean, an X3, a similarly equipped conventional X3 wouldn't be a lot cheaper than this car. I mean, I drove BMW X3 models, two liter diesels that were about 80,000 euros. So I think this is a better deal overall, as long as you can adapt to the range. So some countries offer discounts on government grants and so on for these cars. So you can probably get them a bit cheaper too. Dealers can probably offer you a good deal as well. So I think it's a rather good deal. But overall, <coughs> as a conclusion to my review, I think the iX3 is exactly what BMW set out to offer. Um, it's a electric SUV. It's an electric X3. Uh, it drives rather well. Being rear wheel drive only, the front will be quite light because the weight distribution in this car is 53% on the back um 47% uh, up front so it's a bit uh nose light and the front end will lose grip sometimes because you have a lot of extra weight on this car so when you push it hard into a corner the front end will lose its mechanical grip you will have a tendency to understeer at times because you don't have enough grip to turn but overall it's a nicely balanced car uh, having the power to the back and most of the weight on the back gives you a very interesting feeling when you're driving this car and you don't really get to drive rear wheel drive only SUVs these days anymore they used to be a thing back when BMW started making SUVs like the original X1 was a rear wheel drive uh, SUV you don't really get that today but it's a very interesting feeling it's a very fun car to drive and the lack of all-wheel drive won't be an issue in most parts of the world you have um, most people buy them to handle snow this car has a tall um, ground clearance about 18 centimeters with a good set of winter tires rear-wheel drive cars will be fine that said this has been my review of the BMW iX3 I hope you guys enjoyed it overall it's an electric X3 it's exactly what BMW promised it's a good car I liked it but it doesn't do anything special. It's just what BMW promised, an electric X3. So now you have the power of choosing what kind of powertrain you want on your X3. That's it, don't forget to like, share, and of course subscribe to keep this channel alive. And don't forget to feed your passions. Until next time, ciao.